What is up YouTube? So today we're going to see how I am able to figure out whether I should go with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro or the 11 inch. Now I just recently got the new M1 12.9 inch and it wasn't just because of the M1 and the mini LEDs. The big reason was to help me decide if this 11 inch iPad Pro that I've been using for the past year was the right size. So I'm going to share what my results were how I got to them, and hopefully it helps you make a better decision as to which iPad Pro you should roll with as far as 12.9 inch versus 11 inch. Now, as far as 2018 versus 2020 versus the new 2021, I got some thoughts on that too. I don't know if it'll be in this video. Might be separate, might just give it here. But anyways, let's get into the video. <sighs> What's up, YouTube? Okay, today let's figure it out, baby. Is the 11 inch iPad Pro or the 12.9 inch iPad Pro for you. Now you may have been recently looking at the brand new iPads or previous ones and you always wondered which size is right for you because it's hard. It's like, how do you make a decision? How do I choose what's the best iPad Pro size? I'm spending a nice amount of money. I would like to pick the right iPad Pro. And today I'm gonna help you make that decision. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share a lot of my real life scenarios and that some of them might line up with you, some of them won't, but hopefully they help you make a better, more informed tech purchase decision. Let's get into this video. Right here we have the 11 inch. This is the one that I've been living the longest with and I absolutely love the 11 inch iPad Pro. Let me explain why. So basically when it comes to the 11 inch tablet size, I feel like this is an ideal tablet size. Now this is an iPad, let's be real. There's a big difference between a tablet and an iPad. This is an iPad. But I feel like 11 inch feels like an iPad, a typical iPad and a typical size. And then you pair it with something like this magic keyboard. Now it's kind of like a little nice little pocket book, a little miniature, like kind of like similar to those Chromebooks, those little small ones and things like that, but so much more powerful and capable. Now only as far as iPad OS will go, but that's a different conversation. We won't even get into that. Then you come over here to the 12.9 inch, the behemoth. This right here is the brand new M1 2021 iPad Pro. No, I did not wipe off the uh, finger smudges. Not as many on this thing. As you can see, I haven't been touching it as much. I like to use keyboards with it or I like to use them in sidecar. We're gonna talk more about that a little later. But this is massive. This thing is big. It's a lot bigger than you think, especially in person. Once you hold this thing with two hands and just the size and the, oh boy, this is a big boy. So keep that in mind. I wanna express that to you because although you think it's just an iPad, it's a tablet, it's not the same as a laptop. The second I put this 12.9 inch iPad Pro onto this magic keyboard. This is basically essentially a laptop. This is like a MacBook Air, but I think a lot thicker and more expensive and more restricted. So let's break it down here. What are you really looking for when you go for an iPad Pro? Now with the new M1 iPad Pros, there's the difference of the fact that the 12.9 inch is the only version that comes with the mini LEDs and the, uh, what else is it? I think that's it that separates them, right? And maybe, I, I, I don't, is that the only thing separating those two? Hold up, player. <laughs> no, real talk, the biggest difference with the 12.9 inch from the 11 inch on the new M1 iPad Pros is essentially the mini LED display. And to be honest, let's be quite frank, I've been using this M1, I, uh, no, I'm not gonna say it here. You guys, I'm gonna be giving a real, real, real review about this whole 12.9 inch mini LED get down. Let's stay on task here. This is about sizing. Okay, so essentially when you come to make a decision between 11 inch and a 12.9 inch, the differences are very small and minute. Even with the new M1 with the mini LED and all that stuff, unless you're in a necessity for that or you have the capabilities to actually put that to use, there's no difference. You're, you're, either, you're choosing the size that fits your lifestyle best. Now, 11 inch. Honestly, when I think about portability and convenience and what's gonna do me better from portable to just all around overall use, the 11 inch checks that box fully for me. Not so much a 12.9 inch. It's not as small, it's not as convenient. It's, it's, you know, it's a little bit more to deal with. But that's fine because another place where this one shines over this one is in screen real estate. 
I mean, it is a 12.9 inch display. Essentially, it's 13 inch almost display versus 11 inch. That's a nice size difference, but that comes with caveats as far as weight, convenience, and um, what do you call it? I don't know. So yes, the size difference makes a difference as far as the portability and the usability and all that stuff and screen real estate. I love the screen real estate at 12.9 inch, especially when I use Sidecar. If you're someone who's gonna be using Sidecar a lot and the tablet function of the iPad is like the extra sauce to the Sidecar and things like that, because honestly, for me personally, that's how it is. I know I'm different from everyone else. They're gonna use their tablets more in a tablet fashion. My newfound glory, when I'm not using this in tablet fashion, is Sidecar. But the 12.9 inch, the resolution, the uh, space and screen real estate I get when doing Sidecar is a huge plus to me. I love it. But do I love that enough to give up my portability and convenience of the 11 inch? That's the question, honestly, that you have to answer too personally because it comes down to what are your needs and necessities? There's a lot of people who are gonna benefit from the bigger display, the more screen real estate, and just this bigger platform. I love it actually, but also, I think I kinda love the 11 inch more, just to be quite frank and honest because, okay, Right here, boom, look how little, this This feels like a tablet, this feels light, this, it's, it's something about that feeling, it's like, oh, when I grab this, it's not overwhelming. It's like, all right, I got my little tablet, let me do my little thing, when I write on it, it's like the perfect size for paper, things like that, it feels very familiar. As opposed to this, big old bad boy, and I whip out this, and I go to write on here, I'm writing on something massive, okay. So look, we got instant notes. Yo, shout out to Apple for the instant note. You know what I mean? I know they got it from the Galaxy Note. We're gonna give respect where it's due, but yo, shout out to them for having that. But this thing right here is big. Like it's massive. It doesn't feel like, you know, I feel like I'm writing on a big old tablet that's bigger than the standardized size for paper. But for a lot of people that screen real estate, especially if you're an artist or something similar to that, like that's ideal. That's gonna be, let me see, look at that. I can't even find the dang on button on this big old thing. <laughs> it's gonna be ideal. Let me switch my, uh, <laughs> switch, switch, put your head, put the pad. <laughs> Did that give you a hint, hint? All right, let's make this super simple and super easy. It really comes down to uh, what are you looking for in your tablet? Do you need it to be all this and more? Do you need all this screen real estate? Are you gonna take advantage of the mini LEDs and the 12.9 inch display? Are you out there in the professional field, you're a photographer, videographer, or whatever, and or you do all your editing on here and you need more screen real estate for that timeline? What are you doing and how are you using it? And how does the size of the display benefit you? Because essentially, even going for 2020 or 2021 and all that stuff, the iPad Pro is an overpowered device, but that's wonderful. So what's wonderful about an iPad Pro and it being overpowered is the fact that the stage or the limits and the thresholds before you even get to anywhere near it is, is kind of unlimited. Well, not unlimited, you know what I mean? But it, it literally feels that way. You can do what and ever you want. It's just about what size you want to do it. For me personally, the 11 inch is so much more convenient. It's palmable. It feels good. Like when I carry it, like this lightness, even with the magic keyboard, which is adding weight to this, mind you. If I take it off just like that, oh my God, it's so much lighter. So if you're going to add a magic keyboard to your iPad, you want to think about that because that's weight. This thing is big. Oh, I love the white, by the way, but <laughs> realistically, <laughs> y'all know white don't last. So, um, yeah, which is, uh, yeah. <laughs> and although the black keyboard, you guys can see, this thing is being used, you know what I mean? You can see the fingerprints and the smudges, and I put a lot of use into this 11 inch, but I think it's because it's an 11 inch. Like, I have an incentive to grab this before my MacBook Pro 16 inch because it's an 11 inch display and I could do the same things essentially for the most part. You know, I'm not doing my crazy computer tasks when I grab my iPad Pro. Like, I just like the web browsing that's like a computer. I love that about an iPad and things like that. So when I need to do computer tasks, I'm gonna grab my MacBook Pro or I'm gonna sit down in my iMac. But there's a lot of people who 
depend on these tablets to do so much more, like their businesses and things like that. So if in the case, a bigger tablet serves you better, the screen real estate, you need those mini LEDs that come on a new M1 2021 iPad Pro for like photography, video editing and things like that. And you can benefit from that extra oomph out of your display. But I mean, hey, mini LEDs, yes, there is blooming. And it's not an OLED, so what do you expect? Until it, I don't understand why Apple hasn't put an OLED on these iPad Pros. Let's do it, Apple. Because then you don't have those LED issues. You just have a nice, smooth, deep black, a beautiful display. It looks great on your iPhones, the OLED. Why not put it on your tablets, Apple? But in the sense that a larger display, a heavier, bigger thing to carry around is not a caveat to you, then a 12.9 inch sounds like the iPad for you. But honestly, I think for the typical person, the general person who's looking for a tablet, who likes something small and convenient and easy to use in the sense that it's just so pocket, who is, I don't know, the 11 inch for some reason seems like the sweet spot for an iPad and iPad Pro for that matter. So I personally have chosen to go with the 11 inch more than I would the 12.9 inch. For me personally, I love the convenience. I love the lightness. I love the feel. That's the big thing. When I pick this thing up with or without the Magic Keyboard, it just feels right. It feels like a tablet. It feels like something light, smooth, portable. It feels like an iPad. When I pick up this bad boy, I feel like I took the top off of a, a, a MacBook Pro, which is thicker than the top of a MacBook Pro and it got more weight and you know, girth to it. And then I slap the Magic Keyboard and I just, you know, honestly, <laughs> I'd rather just go get a cheaper MacBook Air than spend the amount that I'm gonna spend for the bigger display and the, and, the, and the limits. Let's stick to the true fact of the matter. This is only about size. And to me personally, the best size is the 11 inch. The more tablet size is the 11 inch. The more convenient size is the 11 inch. And the nice big screen real estate size is the 12.9 inch. The nicer display is the 12.9 inch, but there's a caveat to that, and that's just size, weight, and uh, lack of convenience in the comparison to the 11 inch. That's just me, that's my personal opinion. That's where I'm gonna leave it. You guys make your choice, hopefully I helped you. <laughs> my name is CJ, this is CJ Unplugged. Smash that like button if you like the video, and hit the subscribe button, because I got more dope tech, real life, real life, real person, real consumer, <laughs> talking about tech. <laughs> I buy these, baby. <laughs> I put in work, you know I'm up to get it Early bird gets the worm and the Yankee fitted Like, whoa, bags under my eyes And you know, won't complain, I'm tired, I'm on go For that grip, ten toes, till they swole For that grip, ten toes, till they swole Remember those days, those L's, I couldn't sleep right Now I get paid, vacay, I'm staying beside Breaking the blues over steak, I gotta eat right You could be my peace sign